to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. I expect we're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago we believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence wolves and sheep chickens and hounds yeah sure why not it's just ridiculous the dog eats the chicken it's in our nature I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes. Older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. So I had to give her a chance. Yes, we are a drunken man. Look at the sky.
legs that go on for days, deep, dark eyes, silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? Uh, yes. Okay, let's move on. That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? Some sherry? This is how this is how you think of this drink. You'd be rude for me to drink alone. You must drink with me. If you insist, but bourbon, please. Ah, thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on, spill it from the beginning. emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. for days. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Are you single? <laughs> Are you married? Please, that's why I'm here.
every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. I don't even know what these papers are. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is going to stay there forever. I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm going to end up dead in here whether I like it or not. and my badge. The wallet is real. The badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine. So I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes. Just in case. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. I haven't dusted you off in a while, partner. Looks like I may be needing you now. Oh man, I totally get you. Ironic, but ever since I've been on furlough, with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. More like a Clawville cop, anyway. be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage, but I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. <laughs> exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Beverland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is 
just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure, but to be honest, even you are. You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages and everyone knows who she is. No, I don't know. So, she's that kind of woman. What kind of... I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. What? What kind of women she is. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself, out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. Yes. It has nothing to do with being nice, Deborah, but you're welcome. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. <laughs> Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. 
You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him, Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. You get it now. The secrecy. No, no, sweetheart, no. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. you take it to the police just go there and file a report photos flashing lights fingerprints you know the drill the evidence is very clear even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up or just try the phone triple five triple one please take a look at this well okay let's see deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. And I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Why? Molly, why? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you alright? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Yes. Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Czar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that, but she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club, especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko, but there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess, Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? I'm a detective. 20 years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. 
I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny.
gentlemen. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. My heroes when I was a little chick. I'm starting to think they should have left Clawville as it was, burned to the ground. Beautiful memories from my old life before Molly left me and took our daughter. M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. The good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it. Or what it had to do with shoes. We used to be star cops a few years ago tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything, just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here, not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. The... <laughs> I hope the old bunny had nothing important to do. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, Ben. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles.
was New Year's Eve, and I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. time this poster disappears good old blood boil puts it right back immediately i tore it down at least three times already actually it's a kind of passive aggressive game for us with the chief phyllis, phyllis and roy's Two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look. Officious little shitheads, but harmless. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny. What you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop. Just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so peckish, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood Boil's not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range, as always. Hey, Royce, I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk?
you miss me? No? Same here. Back in the day, I used to patrol the city streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. This happened when that old bloodhound, Bloodboil, was promoted to chief of police. <laughs> <laughs>